Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. I was originally going to take today off, but there's been so much news out there and probably should be a packed episode, so I'll probably take tomorrow off instead, and I'll see you guys back here Sunday with another packed episode. But for today's episode as well, all of today's stories, of course, are time marked down below. Let's hop into our first one, all about FaZe Clan, the return of Olaf Meister to that starting roster. Of course, Exist took his place a couple months ago, nearly two months ago, and Olaf Meister, after a nice break, had some nice messages for all of us as well, as he will return to the starting roster, and apparently we do have Exist naming his new spot on Fnatic's starting roster. And again, people kind of surprised he will not be replacing their IGL Golden, the youngest player on that team. He'll actually be replacing Lecro on the roster. Now, when you f currently go to Fnatic's website, you guys can see the screenshot on screen. You can see the CSGO, the return of Exist to that Fnatic on that Fnatic website. And when you click on the article though, as of right now, me recording, the article is not live yet. So it does seem rumors are true. We have Exist leaving FaZe Clan, Olaf Meister back to the starting roster, and we will have Exist going to Fnatic. And we're not really sure right now at this point in time whether he'll take over the IGL role or leave that to Golden on that team. And again, it's a huge surprise. We knew Olaf Meister was probably going to come back sometime soon, but we did not know once he left that Exist would go right away to somewhere else. So Fnatic is now going to welcome their newest member, Exist, and I cannot wait to see how he does there. Because for FaZe Clan, it's been argued, you know, time and time again, obviously not the most consistent person out there, but still showed his talents there as an IGL. So we'll see how he continues on in the future. But also, in huge roster change news out there, back in the North American scene, we seemingly have Steel's own lineup of Torqued falling apart one piece at a time. A couple days ago we lost Swag. Swag's going back to rank S, FPL, and kind of semi full-time streaming. On top of that, AZK has now stepped down. Apparently the roster was going to bench him no matter what, but you have to really realize right now when it comes to North American talent, who can really replace these guys? Yes, you could be arguing, and again, rumors are soaring back and forth that Swag was the overrated player in that team, but certainly not their worst player, and they also could say that AZK was one of the worst players, if not the worst player on that roster, but nonetheless, you look at the North American teams right now, the talent is actually willing to join this roster, and who is actually actually better than AZK, who is better than the swag, definitely two hard replacements coming in, and it really kind of you know begs the question, at this point in time, with Torqued, they are less than three weeks away from their biggest tournament appearance yet at ESL Belo Horizonte, a $200,000 tournament, where they were probably favored to maybe place top half, but when you look at it now, they are now down to three of their five members, and again, we really don't know who's going to join this roster in time, just three weeks time to prepare for that, it begs the question, will Steel, in the future, after future tournaments as well, will he take other offers out there, you have to understand, they're probably out there for this guy. He's taken this team from ground zero it seems like to, of course, uh, I've talked about in the past their their historical you know, successes throughout Mountain Dew League, almost making EPL. It really begs the question, will he leave this roster for another offer as the roster falls apart slowly but surely, and who's going to leave next? And also, it does beg the question, you know, maybe rumors out there, are AZK and Swag planning on joining someone else? Are they going to join maybe Days and his team and, and kick someone like No One or Ocean from that subtle roster? That would be the biggest backstab in CSGO history, or at least in this year of CSGO. We're going to wait to see what happens to Torch guys, my once favorite Mountain Dew League team, they are now cut in half. And another roster change rumors out there, we thought it was kind of funny when it was first announced, but it does seem quite legit that Cloud9 is actually looking to replace their current IGL FNS. The bigger instance though, and not so necessarily the big worry out there, is of course the buyout amount for FNS. It was actually first posted by their CEO, the Cloud9 CEO Jack, that the buyout amount was exactly $200,000 until we have Hotshot, the co-founder of CLG, of course the, the founding organization, that uh, the co-founder of the organization who owned FNS prior, and he was joking around about $200,000 as if we actually believed that Cloud9 actually paid 200 k for FNS. Now, this kind of begs the question, as, as earlier it did, which CEO, which co-founder is telling the truth here? Did CLG get 200 k for FNS, or did Cloud9 not pay that $200,000? And then why would Jack tweet about that? Is it, is it some kind of humble brag you want to have that you paid a large amount of money to satisfy the community and what you guys need role-wise? But it also does seem as well, it's very obviously a player decision here to get rid of FNS. Uh, as question on stream we had automatic reply about this if fns was going to get kicked he replied with this it's actually false they're gonna replace me because i'm going pro in fortnite so but because i'm so good at cs they need two replacements for me so obviously some kind of player conflict conflict going on no matter what they did pay for him it was probably an overpay for the fact that he's been there less than two months time and they're looking for a new guy to replace him already it's probably a big waste of money no matter what but it does seem one of the co-founders one of the ceos either hotshot or jack is lying either clg did or did not get 200k but why would jack 
Anyway, moving on to more important stuff as well. We also have Dignitas making their roster changes. If you guys are aware of this, now in the past week, we have Dignitas changing their entire, you know, over half their roster. It was actually first, uh, they picked up Infinite and Ricks. That one of the players they dropped for those guys was actually A2Z. He joined that Team Subtle roster with Dazed and, and formerly Mo TV before he left. Um, so yeah, they also now replaced a new member as well, and they're going to sign PTR. So PTR, a very good sign for the team, and they will be competing in their first MDL matches last night as well as today. So it can be very cool to see this roster. The Dignitas roster has a lot of changes this past, I guess you could say, ever since they did re-sign. They've had a lot of changes going on in that roster. And this one actually looks like the most potential so far. So going forward, Mountain Dew League, Dignitas, they do look pretty handy. We'll see how the new roster works out for them, though. And also in rumors, but also confirmed by JW himself, we had Don Hossi say this. I'll link his Twitter down below, but also confirmed by JW. It was true. ESCA has now, this week, been reaching out via email to pro players out there. Now, I really want to question where in their mind this was actually a good idea, how they thought this was not going to get out there. Of course, ESCA has had many scandals in the past. I can't even remember all of them. Of course, the Bitcoin miner being one of them. I also brought up a story a long time ago. Uh, Mario, a friend of ours and a CSGO community member, he had, a, I think it was nearly $35,000 plus in referrals to ESCA, referring people to use their service. They never paid him any of that money. I believe of the $35,000, they paid him five or 6000 and refused to pay the remaining amount of $30,000. He's going to court with them once he can afford a lawyer. And we've had other instances as well, other scandals going on revolving around ESCA and now this one, where it's apparently, like I said before, been confirmed, ESCA reaching out to pro players and trying to pay them upwards of $2,000 per month to only play on the ESCA platform. That means pretty much do not play face it as well. And also to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, which pretty much means you cannot come publicly forward and say, hey, I took this money, I'm only gonna be playing ESCA. And as many of you guys are aware, especially the past year or so, in terms of Twitter advertisements, Instagram advertisements, it's become very apparent that many people out there need to actually publicly state when they are actually being paid to do something, you know, hashtag ad or you know, putting in the description, this is an advertisement, it, that needs to be disclosed publicly, especially in the CSGO scene. We've seen many times in the past, people did not disclose things like ownerships of, you know, gambling websites, and it comes to bite you in the butt. So obviously there's two sides to this. It, it's a great thing for ESCA to be offering pro, pro players salaries. You know, it could be a salary, $24,000 a year if they were, of course, a long-term contract commitment there just to play on ESCA and not face it. That's not necessarily the bad part about this. The bad part, many people agree on is probably the NDA, the non-disclosure, the fact that you would be playing ESCA and not telling anyone as to why you're only playing that platform, the way you're restricting players and what they can actually say or do uh, inside your platform. And also, another problem could be, if you're going to start uh, you know, paying these players $2,000 to play ESCA, what about the players who do not agree to play? Do you all of a sudden kick them from, the, from, your, from, your, organi from your server, from your, from your platform, from your client, because they did not agree to your, their contracts? There's definitely some room for some future problems with that plan. Now, I, I do com I commend them for their efforts, but it does seem, I'm not really sure how you saw this one going down and how you saw players not taking this publicly and shaming you for it. So what do you guys think about this? Kind of the most interesting story today that I thought about. There's definitely two sides to it. There's a good side to it, and obviously more importantly, the bad side to it of ESCA trying to offer players money to only play on their platform. It's good business-wise, and of course it's good to offer players more money, but the way they went about it, I feel like it could have been done a bit differently. So leave a comment down below what you guys think about that. And very lastly, for today's episode of CSK News, I do want to talk about the tragic story very, very shortly. And that is a total biscuit. If you guys do not know, had such a heavy influence in the gaming scene, uh, in the video game scene as well, here on YouTube, other other platforms out there as well. I will link his social media, probably his Twitter down below, although it will be most likely inactive as he did pass away um, just in the past 24 hours. Uh, if you guys do not know, he was battling with cancer for quite some time, I believe just over three to three and a half years. Um, and he was, again, just a huge influence. I know a lot of you guys probably knew his content, watched his content as well. So I'll link some stuff down below for all of you guys. He did actually lose his fight with cancer within the last day or so. So just wanted to shout that out. Of course, um, it's, it's always kind of crazy to see a guy so young, just 33 years old as well. Uh, so yeah, pretty crazy to see that kind of stuff. And of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to any of his, his relatives or family as well. So, but uh, in brighter news, I hope you guys are on today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did, please leave a like or a comment down below. I will see you guys all sometime soon. I'm probably going to take tomorrow off and I'll see you guys on Sunday or Monday with a big weekend recap. So hope you guys all enjoy it. My name is Jake Like You and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye guys.